What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my gaming setup as of 2021. Let's get right into this. So the reason why I say as of 2021 is because I plan on in the future, really soon hopefully, moving in with my girlfriend and my gaming setup is going to be changing. Hopefully I can expand it a little bit and make it actually look a little bit more presentable, but it looks pretty decent as of right now. And I decided to share it with you guys because I've had a lot of people recently ask and request it. Maybe over the past couple months, I decided to finally sit down and show you guys my gaming setup. So it's been over maybe three years ago, I finally went and purchased the PlayStation 2 and that kind of kickstarted me purchasing other consoles, video games, and other things for my gaming setup and everything that I have here that I'm gonna be showing you guys today. Some of the stuff you might have seen already on the channel, I've done either unboxings for or just showed that I purchased it on the channel. So right now I have the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3 inside the cabinet here and the PlayStation 4 along with a bunch of games accessories and things like that I have yet to get the PlayStation 5 but by the holidays 2021 I am hopefully going to be purchasing that with my YouTube money So I'm really excited to be able to afford something like the PlayStation 5 with my funds from YouTube now I also have my first and only handheld that is the PlayStation Vita here. I purchased this back in the summer of 2020, I wanna believe, and it's something that I have played quite a bit, and it's definitely helping me trophy hunts. I absolutely love this. Now, once I get set up, once me and my girlfriend move in together, I'm gonna to be putting this on a little stand and displaying it that way. I think that is a pure genius move to do with it. Now, I have tried this on a stand that holds hockey cards, and surprisingly, it does hold the PlayStation Vita. But right now, because of my current setup, there's no point to have it on a stand and have it all looking nice when hopefully within the next month or so, or maybe in the future, me and my girlfriend are gonna finally move in together and all this stuff is going to be rearranged. So there's no point of showing that in this video. Now back whenever I purchased the PlayStation 1, it was actually part of a bundle. So for the PlayStation 1, two controllers and I think four or five games, it was only $40, which is really undervalued. It's a lot more valuable than that in my area. Most of them go between 50 to $75 just for the console itself and a controller and all the hookups and no video games. The fact that it came with some video games, for example, it came with Crash, a wrestling game which I never played back in the day and a couple of other games. I'm really excited to play the PlayStation 1. I'm glad I have it in my collection. The PlayStation 2 I've had, like I said, for maybe three years now and mostly for the most part, I only have my old wrestling games that I collected and I am gonna be purchasing some more games for the PlayStation 2 that I remember playing back whenever I was a kid, and I'm gonna be getting more into collecting PlayStation 2 video games, hopefully in the near future, whenever I can find them at affordable prices. For the PlayStation 3, I haven't played it for, I haven't really played it since the PlayStation 4 and since I got the PlayStation 4, but I have been playing and purchasing a couple other games for it. I recently purchased WWE Legends of WrestleMania for the PlayStation 3 and played and platinumed it and it was a lot of fun But since I haven't played the PS3 in maybe five years It took a couple hours for all of the updates and everything to be able to finally play and use this console And of course we have the PlayStation 4 which is my current main console I have a ton of games that I digitally purchased for it along with some physical games you guys can see here and here and it even have a external hard drive that is behind the PS4 here, hooked up to the PS4 to extend the storage. I think I have a two or three terabyte external hard drive for my PlayStation 4. Now the only thing in my opinion that I'm missing in my collection, well there's kind of two things. Outside of the video games that I wanna get for part of my collection and for different consoles, number one, I'm missing an original PlayStation 1 controller. I really wanna get my hands on it, but in my area, people are charging like $30 for a PlayStation 1 controller, and I can't afford purchasing an original PlayStation 1 controller for that amount. And I'm talking about the one that had no analog sticks. That's what I want just for collecting purposes. The other thing that I wanna get my hands on is a PlayStation Portable, a PSP, which I would basically have a complete PlayStation collection if I had the PlayStation P other than the PlayStation 5. So that's one of the next things that I wanna to try to purchase as well. So now as far as my setup, 
I have the PlayStation 1 and 2 set up next to each other and the PlayStation 3 and 4 set up next to each other for a reason. The PlayStation 1 and 2 have an AV cord for the video and audio and the power cord are different. The PlayStation 1 is a little bit different than the PlayStation 2, but I have those wired through the entertainment unit as well. And I just have one AV cord. So if I want to play the PlayStation 1, I hook it up to that one. If I want to switch to the PS2, I just disconnect it and hook it up to the PlayStation 2. All of the cords are not connected to the consoles right now. And the reason for that is I don't want any power going through them and deteriorating, deteriorating them over time. I just like my setup like this, where whenever I want to play whatever console I want to play, I'll connect it at the time I want to play it, and when I'm done, disconnect it. Now for the PS3 and the PS4, the power cord is the exact same, so I always have my PS4 connected because it's my main console. I don't need to keep disconnecting it when I'm done with it. I'll just leave it always connected. But the PS3, whenever I want to play it, I just turn the PS4 off, disconnect the HDMI cord and the power cord, and plug it into the PS3 and be able to use it on the same setting as well. So it's easier for me to have most of my consoles not connected and when I need them, connect them and have only one cord plugged in at a time and be able to use it whenever I need it. Now what I used to have to do to play my PS1 or PS2, I used to have to take the actual console, set it on the table and have the cords plug into the TV and the outlet and then just have the controller plug into it because the controller from where I sit won't reach here. What I ended up doing was purchasing a extension cord for the controller. Now it will plug into the PlayStation 1 or 2 because they're wired consoles and it will give me the reach. So instead of me always having to move the consoles out of the unit to be able to play them, which is a little bit of a hassle, I can keep them here, plug the extension cord in for the controller and still be able to play the game without having to sit right next to the TV. Of course, I don't have that issue for the PlayStation 3 or the PlayStation 4 because they're wireless controllers but that is something I still wanted to mention that is part of my gaming setup. Another thing that you guys can't really tell with my gaming setup, how it currently is, is all of the controllers that I have. I have at least two controllers per console, but for the PS3, I only have one working console. Like I said, I never played it for, I guess, five years. There's five years where it just sat here, and over time, one of the controllers stopped working, and I, don't, I can't remember if it's a drift in the analog stick or what. So for the PS3, I only have one working controller, but for everything else, I have at least two. Other than the PlayStation 1, I'm still looking for an original PlayStation 1 controller that has no analog sticks. I have yet to find one in my area that's cheap enough that I can afford. So this is my gaming setup as of right now, 2021. Like I said, once I move in with my girlfriend, I'll give you guys an update. I likely won't give you guys an update until 2022, whenever I have everything finally set up and ready to go. I also want to get not only the PlayStation 5, the PlayStation Portable, the PSP, and an original PlayStation 1 controller, but I also want to have them set up in a way where not only each of the consoles are on display and ready to actually play at any time. I'm gonna probably keep up the wiring of how I currently have it at my new setup, but I want to not only display the consoles, but I want to display the video games, the controllers, and the handhelds as well. A little bit better than you guys can see them here because as I'm recording this video, I know it's kind of hard for you guys to see the PS3 and PS4 because it's in the cabinet here with the glass and the PlayStation 1 and 2, it's kind of hard to see them from this angle, but this is the current setup that I am using. Hope you guys enjoyed me sharing with you my current gaming setup and in the future, once I'm finally moved in, I'll give you guys an update once I have, like I said, the PSP, the PS1 original controller, and the PS5, I'll give you guys an update of what it finally looks like, but it's gonna take me some time because I want it a certain way, and I can't wait to share that with you guys. So thank you everybody that was requesting me to share with you my gaming setup. Like I said, this is my current setup, but it will change, and I'll give you guys an update in the future. I'll see you guys in the next one. Comment down below how your gaming setup is. Do you guys have it a similar way? Is all of your games and consoles ready to play whenever you need? Let me know down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Please take care. Peace.